I don't have a Ghostbusters t-shirt. I'm sorry. Please don't click off. Well, time to talk about the new Ghostbusters film, the remake of the 1975 TV show, The Ghostbusters. And of course I intend to talk about the most controversial aspect of this movie. No Janos cameo! How do you make a remake to Ghostbusters and not have a Peter McNichol cameo? That's for shame. If everything you're doing is bad, I want you to know this. So this is going to be a completely uh, spoiler-filled review because the weekend has passed and everyone who wanted to see this movie has already seen it and those who are like, I'm not seeing this movie because you ruined childhood, then first of all, who cares about you? Seriously. They were probably there opening night as well. Let's, let's be honest. Let me just first say that I don't know anyone personally who was against this movie just because there's an all-woman cast. Uh, I don't, probably because I don't hang out with, uh, ignorant, idiotic dude bros. The only thing that made me really cautious about this movie was the choice of the director, Paul Feig, Feig, one of those, who I don't think is a bad director. He is just one of those modern comedy filmmakers where he films people doing lots of lots of improv and then uses way too much of it. Comedy filmmaking is as much about editing as it is anything else, and you need to know when to cut on a joke, and when to, and how to time jokes properly. And there are certain moments in this movie, uh, most of which were in the trailer, which explains the negative reaction, where jokes just completely fall flat, or the tone just seems to be all over the place. There are lines that are like really funny on their own, but then they just go on way too long. This seems to be the case with this guy's uh, other movies that I've seen. Again, they're not bad movies, like I really like Bridesmaids, but it's, they're all like over two hours long. That's just, and it's just, it's way too long for the kind of movie you're doing. And while I am a fan of the original movie, I'll admit that the premise has a lot of potential for world building and uh, you can kind of see why they want to like franchise this material because I think there actually is uh, a lot of potential material uh, to expand upon. Unfortunately, this is a, a remake in all of the ways that a remake should not be. And having a female cast, while essentially it is a stunt, I think is a really great idea to sort of separate yourself from the first movie and kind of do your own thing. But again, story-wise, they kind of don't. It's very much a remake of the first movie, so much so that it really actually hinders it. The basic story structure is just far too similar. You again have a group of scientists who are disgraced, they decide to go into business of catching ghosts, you have the scene where they all for the first time get together and put on the suits and go and, and catch the ghosts with the proton packs, and then there's a story about uh, ghosts attacking the city that is slowly uncovered, and then there's the big bad guy at the end of the movie and there's a giant monster attacking the city at the end. I mean, it's almost beat for beat, uh, story-wise, the same movie. And you just can't help but feel that this was the will of people going, well, we have to make sure that the fans are acknowledged and appreciated, but it's like, do your own thing. Who, who cares what the fans of the original film think? They have that movie. You're going to have people who want to see a new Ghostbusters film give them a completely new Ghostbusters film. Now that's not to say that this movie is a complete failure, because it's not. It, the things that work best about it specifically are the cast. All four of them are extremely likable and have their own great funny moments. The weakest, the weakest one I'd say is probably Kristen Wiig, who doesn't have that strong of a character and uh, she's just kind of leaning back and playing her awkward Kristen Wiig character. Uh, Leslie Jones has some really funny moments in this. Uh, I think she's gonna surprise people who probably thought she would be terrible, but she actually is really, really funny. And my favorite being Kate McKinnon as the scientist one, Holtzman, who... the standout of this movie. I would say she pushes this movie into go see this in the theater for me. There are scenes where she would just be in the background or something in a scene and I would just watch her to watch her reaction and it would make me smile or laugh every time. It's interesting that this didn't take more risks to be its own separate movie because it looks like a completely different movie than the original. It's a lot more colorful and right off the bat there's a very strong comedic tone uh, in a sense that there's like a lot of jokes which the first one's not really very jokey it's more like 
situational humor. You know, it's just occurred to me we really haven't had a completely successful test of this equipment. I blame myself. So do I. Well, no sense worrying about it now. Why worry? Each of us is wearing an unlicensed nuclear accelerator on his back. Yep. Now let's get ready. Switch me on. The villain here, who is basically a disgruntled internet troll, is really the weakest part of the movie, sadly, and uh, I don't know if it's the actor's fault, it's probably the combination of the actor and the writing, but he's just so forgettable. And by the end, when you discover his final plot, what he was planning to do the whole time, you're like, really? That was it? Okay. And the cameos. Oh, the cameos. The first one, which is Bill Murray, it was like, oh, it was cute, you know, uh, kind of saw it coming, but uh, it's a cute little cameo. Uh, then they do another one, uh, Annie Potts, which I was actually surprised to see her. I was like, oh, I, you know, like, oh, I hadn't seen her in so long, it's nice to see her again. And then they do Dan Aykroyd, and then they do Ernie Hudson, and then they do Sigourney Weaver, and then they do the Slimer, and it's just like, Oh, it's too distracting. There's just so many uh, references, jokes to the first movie that will probably go over most people's head, but I just found them super distracting and it's just like, guys, come on, just do, again, just do your own thing. And an Ozzy Osbourne cameo that just made me shake, like, that was confusing. If this movie had been cut down a lot, maybe 20 minutes shorter, cut down the cameos and try for a more interesting story, a different story, then I'd be a lot more enthusiastic about it. As it is, I feel like it falls mostly into forgettable, uh, with again, a lot of really funny moments that uh, can push it over into going to see it in the theater. So I would say if you're already interested in seeing this, but you're just kind of teetering on not sure, I'd say probably give it a chance. I will say that now that they've gotten this story out of the way, the origin story told again, which was already told in Ghostbusters 2, pretty much. I'm definitely looking forward to a possible sequel because I really like these characters and I want to see them do other interesting things. And more Holtzman. Always more Holtzman. I got some pretty cool stuff cooking up over here if you want to just turn your hand. Um, I improved beam accuracy by adding a plasma shield to the RF discharge chamber. I have cryo cooler to reduce helium boil off. And to dub it all up, we got a freaking Faraday cage. And maybe a new director, one who knows how to edit a comedy properly. Edgar Wright! I'm sorry. I think I have a cold or something.